Regina Stahl! Do you know what everyone says about you? They say that you're a homeschooled jungle freak who's a less hot version of me. Yeah, so don't try to act so innocent. You can take that fake apology and shove it right up your hairy- And that's how Regina George died. Okay, how did we get here? Well, why don't you go pop that corn, sit tight, and let us rewind for you. Meet Katie Heron. It's pronounced like Katie. Who, after being homeschooled for the last 12 years in Africa, is excited to attend her very first day in real American high school. Her first day turns out to be disastrous. She realizes that being at school is, well, horrible. Jumbo! What? She ends up eating lunch hiding in the bathroom because somehow even that seems better than being alone in the cafeteria? Everything changes when she meets Damien and Janice. Not only are they some of the best characters in this whole movie, this is Damien, he's almost too gay to function, but they teach Katie all about surviving North Shore High. Yes, they make her skip class, but it's definitely worth it as it gives us the famous presentation of the plastics. Karen Smith, the stupid one, who apparently doesn't know how to spell the word orange. I mean, who does? Gretchen Wieners, the gossip. She knows everything about everyone. That's why her hair is so big, it's full of secrets. And finally, ooh, getting excited for this, just calm down me. The Queen Bee. The star, the iconic, Regina George. Janice gives Katie the map if she wants to survive at North Shore. Indeed, she'll have to pick really carefully where to sit at the cafeteria. Everyone knows that. And the struggle is not real, folks. As Damien and Janice wave her over to sit with them, Regina George who, after saving her from lovely teenage twit Jason, invites her to sit at their table. We were then blessed with one of the most iconic scenes of the movie and chick flick cinema. Fascinated by Katie, the Plastics will invite her to have lunch with them for the rest of the week, reminding her about rule number one. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Oh my god, okay, you have to do it. Katie agrees after being convinced by a suspiciously hating Janice because I just think that it would be like a fun little experiment. Spoiler alert, it won't be. Oh, and yes, almost forgot about him. Katie will meet the love interest, the necessary yet completely unuseful jock, who has an in and out relationship with Regina. I mean, of course it wouldn't be funny otherwise. He's cute, kind, but not so bright, which is good for Katie, you'll see. We give you ladies and gents, Aaron Samuels. Even after entering the girl world and finding out about its rules, you can't wear a tank top two days in a row, and you can only wear your hair in a ponytail once a week. So I guess you pick today. Oh, and it's the same with guys. Like, you may think you like someone, but you could be wrong. Katie the nerd still considers joining the mathletes, which is not cool, obviously. No, 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 you cannot do that. That is social suicide. Damn, you are so lucky you have us to guide you. At Regina's house, she finds out about the fun yet evil plastics version of the Holy Bible, the Burn Book, a book in which they write the nicest things about their classmates. Trang Pack is a grotesky little biatch. Still true. Don Schweitzer is a fat virgin. Still half true. <laughs> a few weeks later, pop culture happens. It's October 3rd. And it's important because... We're having a Halloween party at my friend Chris's tonight. You wanna come? Yeah, sure. So yes, there's that. I swear, this guy's really not very interesting, but he does invite her to a Halloween party. Katie, as clueless as Alicia in Clueless, get it? Duh. Ends up showing up dressed as an ex-wife. The night will get even harder on her when Regina decides to reunite with none other than a love interest guy right in front of her. Broken hearted and desperate, she runs straight to Janice to come up with a plan. <coughs> the plan. A three-part plan to overthrow Regina. Regina would be nothing without her high-status man candy, technically good physique, an ignorant band of loyal followers. Destroying her clothes, 
feeding her with calteen bars or giving her foot cream as a moisturizer won't be enough to break the queen's hard steel reputation. I mean, duh. Change of strategy. Can't break the queen, break her entourage. Targets? Gretchen, Aaron, and Karen. The task turns out to be stupidly simple. The breaking of Gretchen happens at the North Shore Winter Talent Show. Because of course there is a talent show. This is a 2016 movie. Again. Duh. Giving us yet another iconic movie scene, the one and only, the magnificent, wonderfully directed Jingle Bells Rocks performance. That is so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. See? Broken. After this, Gretchen becomes an easy target, a weak link, a shortcut to the treasured information needed to successfully manage the plan's next stage, breaking up Aaron and Regina. And you know she cheats on Aaron. Yes, every Thursday he thinks she's doing SAT prep, but really, she's hooking up with Shane Oman in the projection room above the auditorium. In order to get Aaron's full attention, Katie will purposely fail a math class test and get him to tutor her? Quite a desperate move, as she's almost a math genius, and he, well, he's nice. Well, the first time I did it, I got a zero. Wrong. But then when I checked it, I got one. There you go. I got one too. She will use this private alone time to let him know that he's being cheated on. She's cheating on you! What? Ouch! Not so nice move, Katie. Someone is becoming a real mean girl. Regina, alone but still fabulous, will try to get over this failure by focusing on the North Shore Spring Fling and the fitting of the dress she's been dieting for for weeks. Little did she know then that her diet had been hijacked by Katie and her crew, who intentionally gave her the tip to eat calteen bars, bars used to make underfed children gain weight. Now here's the deal, Regina is miserable and Katie is starting to be a lot more like the plastics than Regina herself, which is saying something. Slowly and steadily becoming the villain, Katie fully falls to the dark side when she agrees to write horrible things about Miss Norbury in the burn book. Succeeding in getting Regina kicked out of her group. Yes, I said it, her group. Her crew. Our hero? Katie will become the new Queen Bee. The nominees for Spring Fling Queen are as follows. As she gets more popular every second within the school, Katie organizes a party at her place which turns out to be disastrous. Getting what she deserved, Katie will vomit on Aaron and lose her only true friends. Why are you eating a call team bar? I'm starving. Man, I hate those things. Coach Carr makes us eat those when we want to move up a weight class. What? They make you gain weight like crazy. Mother! Now, folks, the tables are already turning, and real Queen Regina plans her revenge when she finally discovers the truth. She makes the oh-so-bright move of bringing the burn book to Principal Duvall, accusing Katie, Gretchen, and Karen of writing it. I found it in the girls' bathroom. It's so mean, Mr. Duvall. This reveal sets the school on fire, and the principal gathers all the junior girls and Damien in the gymnasium and forces them to be honest with each other. All junior girls report to the gymnasium! A pretty pissed Janice then reveals the plan to everyone, leading us back to the bus scene. <laughs> Katie's back to square one. She joins the mathletes and even attends the state championship, during which she has a revelation. She makes the team win, but nobody cares, even her, and goes straight to the prom, gets crowned prom queen, and uses that opportunity for a speech about being nice to one another, blah blah blah. What did we learn? Being kind is better than being mean. Thanks for that, Katie. This is a teen movie after all, what did we expect? Katie literally shares her crown with everyone, completes her redeeming arc, gets her two friends back, gets the boy, so does Janice by the way, and all ends well. A few months later, everyone has moved on and Girl World is at peace again at North Shore High School. So, are you Team Regina or Team Katie? It's Regina, right? And of course, if you liked this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to join the Binge Society. Take care, see you soon, and always remember... On Wednesdays, we wear pink. <laughs>